Oh, yeah, you do. You get them balls to the wall, man. This is the Balls to the Wall show right here for you on RealLibertyMedia.com. Yep, on the Balls to the Wall show page on RealLibertyMedia.com, by the way, on this Friday, October 19, 2018. Moose Girl will not be with us this evening as she is down at the uh, club, the pub, watching the Brewers, a baseball team from her, from Milwaukee Brewers? No, yeah, from Wisconsin. Uh, Milwaukee Brewers <laughs> play baseball. Uh, they're in some kind of playoff thing, I guess. Uh, anyway, so she's down there at the club watching that, that show, and uh, or game, I guess you call it. Uh, so, so she'll be down there having fun, and, uh, good luck to her team, and all that wonderful stuff. So you got me here, Grimner, doing the show with you all instead, and, uh, I want to welcome everybody from all the various places you may be tuned in from, uh, via the audio stream, if you're not here on the video, but if you're on the audio stream in any of the places you may be, which would be reallibertymedia.com, rlmradio.xyz, uh, freedomsnetwork.com, RealLiberty.org, uh, tune in, internet radio, other places. <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> Welcome to y'all out there in Radio Land. Uh, but if you want, come on over, RealLibertyMedia.com, and, and go to the Balls to the Wall show page there, and uh, you'll 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 see the video, and and you'll see a chat there, and you can jump into the chat here on this chat that we all. Come over here and, and yak away in on irc.freenode.net, but the uh, web app will get you, bring you right on in here. Should you need to get in here, or should you wanna? Hopefully you wanna, because it's cool. We have fun with all that. A anyway, so uh, uh, what is today? Oh yeah, today is the 19th, meaning next Friday is the 26th, which is the closest we're going to get to Halloween. So. Anybody that wants to do any uh, requests for the Halloween program, go ahead and get them in during this week here. Uh, not necessarily during this show, but any time over the next week up to and during, actually, uh, ne next week's program. We'll have the Freakers Ball Freaky Halloween program that we do every year. And, uh, we'll, you know, play some Halloween tunes and some other good stuff and uh, just have a good old time. Talking about whatever Halloweeny kind of stuff we want to talk about, because that's what we do right here on the Freakers Ball, and of course, balls to the wall, man. <laughs> oh boy, uh, you know I I, I I don't want to talk about this. I hate to talk about this, but I I think I have to talk about this because it's it, it saddens me. It saddens me to 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 a great deal. Uh, there's been over the past couple of months I'd say I, I don't know the exact time frame it might be a little longer than a couple months uh, either way uh, some people not getting along in, in the chat room here and, and I've probably talked about this before and, and, and I hate thinking about it and talking about it and, and seeing people not getting along over meaningless stuff but people react, and, and some people overreact, and they and they and they get after each other, and and you know, I, I don't like seeing the arguments going on in the chat room, and and I don't see like seeing people leaving. My favorite people, you know, jumping out of here, and and it, and it, it saddens me, and, and I and I want it to end. I want it to stop. I don't, I don't know what else to say. But if you start, you know, doing these ad hominem attacks as a response to somebody else doing an ad hominem attack instead of maybe just laughing it off because you're better than that. You know better. Uh, you, know, you know that's, I mean, this is IRC and, and people tend to get a, a little overzealous in their wording and their phraseology. <laughs> so, so please, if you're out there, and you're listening to me, and and you can understand what I'm what I'm talking about. There's no reason. I, I mean, okay, you like this, and the other person hates that, and the other person thinks this way, and you think some other way. So what? 
you know, talk about it or don't talk about it. And 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 that's all good and fine, but if you start attacking people, it's just bad. It's it's bad for everybody. It's it's bad for for real everyday media. It's bad for the chat. It's bad for you. Why why get excited or upset over words on a screen? It doesn't make any sense. And and if you're one of the the ones that have have uh, departed from the chat room here, come back and and and. Try. And if you're one of the ones that are still in the chat and you're not being a nice person, then be a nice person. <laughs> I don't, if you don't get along with somebody, don't don't comment on what they have to say. Don't don't, don't attack people. Don't call them names. Don't just try to be get along and just you know. I, like I said, I, I hate, I hate it. I, I really do. Uh, I, 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 I see no reason to get upset if somebody calls you a name. So what? Laugh it off. Somebody tells you to fuck off. Well, big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's freaking IRC. Uh, I, I, that's really all I got to say about that. I just want everybody to get along in here uh, to the best degree possible, because. Dang, man, we're all just here to have, have a good time, share some information. You may not like the information that somebody else shares. Somebody else may not like the information you share. So what? Get, get, get over it. Get over it. Deal with it. And, and, and just try to have the best possible time you can here. Please. Please, please. I, I beg of you. And I'm not a begging kind of person, but... It, like I said, it saddens me. It saddens me to see that. Anyway, <laughs> so welcome to everybody that is still here in the uh, in the in the chat room on uh, Pound Pound Real Liberty Media on irc.freedom.net, and I'm glad that you all that are still here are here, and uh, those of you that are not in here that are listening, welcome to you as well. But uh, welcome to uh, Barman and Cowboy Tech and myself and the Moose Girl, Miss Kate Art Underground, who's doing a great uh, music show on Tuesday and Thursday nights now, and a a uh, talk show called Straight Talk 101 on Sunday evenings, immediately following how. Then we got Charles Sedoni, we got Suckle and Chloe E and Cyborg and Noodle and Echelon and Gramsy and Layer 8. Layer 8. I don't know what I think of. Anyway, Meester Brow, Meister Brow, who just uh, graduated. I, I'm not exactly sure what he graduated from, but something. He did something to improve his uh, uh, knowledge base and, and possibly his career opportunities. We got Poxified and Pone Sauce and Rain in the Fluke Pot. Yeah, we got Mr. Romes and Skittle and Phantom and Asmo too. Colfax and Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit. Did I did I see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gromit, you see? I, I, I missed her. Anyway, uh, Java Doctor and JJ's and uh, Kozu and the Sock Puppet. Welcome to y'all. Glad to have you here with us on this fine, fine Friday evening balls to the wall edition of the Freakers Ball Show. How y'all doing out there? Hopefully good. Anyway, as we do on the freaker or on the <laughs> balls to the wall program, um, I start pretty quickly with the music, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and do here. And I, and I got some I got some stuff here. I don't know. Y'all like cars? Y'all like them uh, hot riding kind of vehicles? <laughs> Here's some cartoons. Not cartoons. Cartoons. <laughs> My pappy said, son, you're going to drive. You're a bunch of punks. You're all a bunch of punks. I was here on this hill racing before you were born. Over the hill. Lost my mind. Out of it. Insane. <laughs> Ah, uh, Dennis Hopper there. That, that song was called uh, Fuel Injection Stingray. Uh, it's it's a, actually a new song to me. Some guy named Marty Friedman. Uh, back from 1981, however. Anyway, before that was uh, Judas Priest heading out on the highway. And we kicked it off there with Commander Cody in the Lost Planet Airmen doing Hot Rod Lincoln. So, uh, good stuff there. At least I, I like y'all. Uh, you know, rock and roll. Rock and roll about cars? I, I, I mean, come on now. How can you beat all that? 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, earlier this week I had a uh, hardware failure in one of my pieces of equipment here, and I was offline for a good number of hours. And 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 I have to say, and, and I, I felt the love. I felt the love here from 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 my from my folks, my RLM folks, and and I do appreciate all of that. It, it was uh, it was great that you know um, that, that it showed that people cared. Now I, I'm not positive for sure that people cared uh, as much about the bots being gone as they were. I was gone, but you know the bots are important. <laughs> Uh, you know, because cause I, I may go away for a number of hours anyway, but the bots are always there. And when the bots aren't there, it's it's, it's more noticeable than, than when I'm not there. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I, I got back online the next morning uh, uh, using a... Uh, apparently there's a, like hot spots here in, in, uh, in New Mexico from from Xfinity, Comcast. Um, and, and, and so anyway, um, I was able to get online at a, at a very slow speed there in the next morning, and then uh, eventually I, I meandered about and found myself a uh, <laughs> very much more. Yeah, they missed the bots very much more. Uh, and, and, but I meandered about the house and found myself an old modem. Uh, that was actually a uh, Comcast Xfinity modem. Um, it, out in another room, and I, I hooked that one up because my other modem was the problem. That, that's the piece of hardware that died. Um, so anyway, um, I, I was offline there for a while, for you know those number of hours, and, and like I said, it was appreciated that uh, people were uh, uh, looking out for me, looking after me, making sure that I was all right. And I uh, just wanted to thank you all for that. And it's good to be back and have everything online. And I got this fancy, dancy new modem that I ordered uh, from the Amazon and 24-hour uh, delivery. And uh, so, yeah, that's all good. That's all working. Everything's fine now. And uh, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, that that's that on that. I don't really have too much to say about that other than the fact that uh, I appreciate your uh, yeah. looking out, looking you know, noticing that I'm not around and and seeing that I'm all right. Okay, let's start off here. I I got I got a, I got a I got a, I got a thing here. I got a thing here. Um, over on realliberty.org, uh, a new blog post from earlier this week from, what day was this on? 22 hours ago. So yesterday, uh, a blog post from yesterday from a man named Flash Somebody. Uh, I didn't realize Flash was a poet, but apparently Flash is a poet of sorts. You could call him that. If you would. If you would. If you want to. <laughs> Flash, there's two programs here on, on Real Liberty Media. Uh, he, he, he does a program on Saturday mornings, or noon, Eastern time on Saturday, called The Dark Table. And then he does another show on Tuesdays uh, at, I think, 1 p.m. Eastern, um, called In a Perfect World. Now, on both of these programs, he's had co-hosts. First, he had, uh, I do believe, Vinny on the dark table, and then Grammy on the dark table, and then Vinny back on the dark table. And then on the other show that he recently started with with uh, Vinny on Tuesdays, called In a Perfect World. And uh, now Vinny has dropped off the radio broadcasting for the time being. Of course, Vinny's done this before. It's not, it's not really a new thing. Uh, anyway, so here's his blog post, and it's called The Magic of Radio and Other Strange Ideas. There once was a radio host called Flash. 
that turned all of his co-hosts to ash. They came and they chattered about shit that don't matter. It was rumored Miss Mary jumped off a ladder. But she just fell off the fence. Anyway, I have made more co-hosts disappear than the CIA. Vinny was my first victim. Then came Miss Mary. Then Vinny again. Can I count Vinny twice? Rob Works is going to stand in for Vinny on In a Perfect World this week, next Tuesday. The dork table seems to be the Titanic of the RLM. I am the lone survivor of another ship drifting into the moral depravity and human degradation that is called modern society. It's a big table to sit at all by myself, but I can do it. Entertaining the mind is, is harder than it looks. At the dark table, we offer a variety of alternate views to use as we encounter the world around us. Sometimes we just argue about the color blue. The dark side awaits your arrival. <laughs> very good, Flash. Very good. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed it anyway. Uh, so if, if you're on the uh, the my, I mean the realliberty.org uh, uh, social networking site, uh, check check it out. Check out the blog there. I'll put the blog into the the, uh, po the, the blog. I'll put the link to his blog in my blog tomorrow. The freakers, the balls to the wall, freakers ball blog. So uh, yeah, check that out, and uh, you'll be glad you did. Maybe I don't know. I just shared it with you. So there it is. <laughs> anyway, good job, Flash. <laughs> oh, man. Now you all know about the, the, the band called Crosby, Stills, and Nash, or Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, and Rombozo. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, mostly. <laughs> Anyway, uh, apparently, music legend David Crosby says, Join me and Normal, and let's legalize marijuana nationwide. That's right, uh, David Crosby is now on the Normal Advisory Board, as of last Tuesday, or, wait, when, 18th? When was that? Oh, yesterday. As of yesterday. <laughs> All right. So his post, Hello, my name is David Crosby. You might know me from... As a founding member of rock legends The Birds and Crosby, Stills, and Nash and & Young. But today, I'm wearing a very different hat. Today, I'm writing to you personally, uh, to personally introduce myself as the newest member of Normal's Advisory Board. Why have I decided to become uh, involved with Normal? It's simple. I'd like cannabis to be legal everywhere. And I, like the good folks at Normal, feel a responsibility to stick up for those people who have been punished as a result of this oppressive and senseless policy. That is why I am partnering with Normal to lend, to lend my name and talents to help end this multi-decade failure that is marijuana prohibition. Let's face it. I, like all of you, believe that people should not be arrested and go to jail for the, for the responsible use of a substance that is objectively safer than alcohol, safer than tobacco, safer than most prescription drugs. And I've looked at the success of states like Colorado and Oregon and have elected to move in a different direction. That is why I'm proud to become part of America's oldest and most well-recognized marijuana law reform organization. And that's why I've joined Normal, uh, Normal's advisory board, to help bring these sensible policies to the entire country. I know that many of you have been involved in Normal for many years, and for that, I'm grateful. It is because of people like you that Normal has been able to uh, move popular opinion and change laws. So today... Let me say thank you for your time and efforts, and I'm looking forward to joining uh, to joining you and Normal to fight the marijuana prohibition in America once and for all. Thank you, David. I may not have always agreed with all your stuff, but you know, on this on this particular matter here, uh, how can I how can I not agree? 
Uh, well, I mean, there, there's certain things I don't necessarily agree with, legalizing, regulating, all that kind of crap, but uh, anything to make it less oppressive uh, is a bonus, on my in my view, on my end. Uh, not and of course not just on just on uh, this particular issue, but on many many issues. But uh, since when, since I that's your focus here, I'm going to agree with you. Anyway, there you go. That's the uh, link to the normal blog blog.normal.org, and again that w that link will be in the post show blog tomorrow. So, uh, hooray, David! What? That sucks so bad, Stanley Candy. Oh, oh. Well, I'm glad you survived it, uh, Rome's your little family get together. <laughs> oh, it may not have been fun, but uh, anyway, uh this week, uh, a couple of days ago, uh Canada, the country nation of Canada legalized marijuana coast to coast in a very limited manner but still they did they legalized it coast to coast in, 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 in that way and then here's the story from uh, RT.com Russia Today I ran out at 420 <laughs> Canada faces weed shortages one day after legalization yeah poor Canada they ran out of weed as soon as it became legal Canada just became the second industrialized nation in the world to legalize cannabis for recreational use, and society is already struggling to adjust a little with pot, uh, po paucity? What, what, what the hell is paucity? I don't know. Let's see what that word means here. I, I got this thing here. Uh, paucity is the presence of something only in small or insufficient quantities or amounts. All right. That's paucity. Um, okay. <laughs> with pot paucity already proving problematic. In the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, the first to legally sell cannabis in Canada at midnight on October 17th, licensed cannabis retailers are experiencing such dramatic demand for their product that many are running low or have sold out completely in just 24 hours. It's very bad news in my eyes. I ran out at 420 today, believe it or not, cannabis retailer Thomas Clark told CBC News with a wry nod to the marijuana culture. I'm a little shocked that I sold out so fast, and I was also very upset that I don't have a product for everybody. I'm letting down a lot of people here, and, and I was assured that I, I paid that if I paid for the cannabis, I would receive it. Clark received a Canadian dollars, ten thousand uh, worth of his seventy thousand dollar order from his supplier, but received no explanation. A troubling sign for the burgeoning four billion dollar industry. Uh, more than five million Canadians are projected to purchase a drug, drug, not drug, uh, in 2018, representing about fifteen percent of all citizens. Sales are forecast to spur an additional 1.1 1 .1 billion in economic growth, resulting in 400 million dollars tax windfall for the government. Canada, the first major economy and G7 nation to fully legalize, fully within a very limited scope. <laughs> <laughs> not really fully. I mean, if if you walk around, if you go in and, and buy two ounces, you are no longer legal. <laughs> so fully legalized is quite the misnomer there on that. Anyway, so fully legalized the devil's lettuce. And just the second nation in the world after Uruguay, which legalized the drug in 2013. U.S. Customs and Border Control is already keeping a close eye on Canadians paying a visit to their southern neighbor. Yeah, if, can, if a Canadian is coming to the U.S. and has nothing to do with the marijuana industry or the proliferation of their industry, that person would generally be deemed admissible. CBP officer Christopher Perry uh, said at a press conference at the Canadian border. Uh, the Toronto police have launched a light-hearted public information campaign 
preempting any potential nuisance calls now that the drug has been legalized. Cannabis is no longer illegal on October 17, 2018. Consumption will be allowed for anyone 19 years and older. Do not call the police for this. That's right. Asking what to do with your frozen meat during a power outage is not a 911 call. Smelling weed coming from your neighbor's home isn't either. <laughs> and they have several other ones listed there on that uh, particular thing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, if, if you're, uh, if the guy, you know, in the house next to you, you smell some, you smell him smoking some dope there, you, you don't call the cops for that. Yeah, you certainly don't call 911, but you don't call the cops at all because, hey, it's legal. He can do that. <laughs> so it is legalized there, but it's, uh, like I said, in a, in a, in a minimal manner. Um, yeah, so, uh, right. <laughs> God. All right, all right. <laughs> I am on. I'm on. I'm on. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. So let's go back to some tunages here. We'll get some more stories about who knows what and where and when after these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a guy by the name of David Bowie. You probably heard of him before. He's, he's not around anymore, but, you know. Gary Clark Jr. there for you with a song called Don't Owe You a Thing. Yeah, very good stuff, very good stuff. Uh, before that, Disturbed uh, doing the old uh, Simon and Garvel's little song, The Sound of uh, Silence. And we kicked it off, David Bowie and uh, Space Oddity. Yeah, how about that? Good stuff, huh? I like it. Hopefully you like it, too. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned last week that I had switched uh, on my Linux machine, uh, which I'm running Mint 18.3, I think, on that. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, so I, I switched on that one um, from Waterfox back to Firefox as a performance issue because um, I was getting some issues there uh, running my Waterfox. It, it, was, it was taking up more... Uh, CPU and memory than it than it had been prior, and uh, so it it was it was not it was not treating me right, so I, I switched uh, back over to that, um, and and it, it like I said it's missing some some stuff that uh, what they call legacy plugins, um, and, and and that those kind of disturbed me. But anyway, I went ahead on this machine and I've switched back to Firefox as well, and it does seem to run better. Uh, uh, the newer version, the newest version of the Firefox here, um, uh, with uh, with with the Firefox uh, on this machine, it does uh, use a little bit less CPU and a bit less RAM. Um, it's not as noticeable as it is on, on the Linux machine, but uh, again, this is a better machine than that one. So, um, whichever you know, whichever it's. Uh, it's fine, and I am adjusting to the fact of uh, not being able to have my my, my little add-on bar at the bottom, uh, where I where I put all my my add-ons before. Now they're all sitting up on top, where, where I don't really like them. And then uh, the other the other thing I'm adjusting to is not being able to put the tabs below. Yeah, no, I love Waterfox, and I'll, and I'll I'll probably go back to it once they uh, update it to the next version, man. Um, <laughs> and I, I do like supporting the project that that that, that kid wrote, uh, but you know, uh, whatever. Um, like I said, for now it, it, it's it's treating me better, um, and it, you know, Firefox is, doesn't have some of the other features that Waterfox has, uh, which, uh, whatever. I deal with it uh, anyway. So, like I said, just for just for the little performance edge there. 
and like I said, it's not much. It's not much, but it's noticeable. Um, if if you notice those kind of things, and depending on who you are and what you're doing on your machine, you, you just why does this keep doing that? Uh, you, you may or may not notice those things. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, yeah, the, the other thing that really bothers me on this newer version of Firefox, and and, and also um, on, on some previous versions of Firefox, because somebody had wrote a special plugin for Firefox called Tabs on Bottom, which is now a legacy plugin and no longer works with Firefox, and there's no replacement for that yet, just as there's no longer an add-on bar restored. Uh, I think since version 52. Uh, either way. But, now tell me, if, you, if you're running the Firefox, and, and probably most of the other modern, quote, modern browsers do this, but they put the tabs right up at top, uh, just below the menu, which uh, luckily there's still a menu on this. I think on Chrome you can't even get a menu anymore. Um, <laughs> which is stupid. But they put the tabs up above the address bar and, and your other toolbar for your for your, uh, your your bookmark toolbar, which is stupid because those should be below because your the tabs are the web pages, and the other stuff is external to the web pages. I would prefer to have to have my uh, bookmark toolbar up above uh, the address bar and the tabs down below the address bar. But they don't they don't give you that kind of thing anymore. I don't know. Um, yeah, I love Waterfox, like I said, but uh, just just that little that little edge there that I was getting a little little little, little extra boost uh, of performance that I decided to go back to Firefox for now, for now, for the time being. Will that change? Possibly, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, so that for for today. Uh, Maybe not tomorrow, but for today, uh, I'm running the Firefox here. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how, we'll see where we, where we wind up with that. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, Waterfox is is, is awesome. Uh, like I said, uh, just uh, uh, yeah, whatever. I, I do run I do run a lot of add-ins, plugins, or what do they call them? Add-ons. I don't know. Whatever. I, I do run a lot of those, and some of those could be causing a little problem or an issue, I don't know, um, but uh, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> I, I came across this article earlier this week, and uh, I just thought I had to share. I, I had to share. Um, some of y'all still use Facebook, and I, I know who you are. You don't have to tell me. I know who you are. And some of y'all aren't real happy about what they call law enforcement here in the U.S. of A. Well, those two things don't really work together. They don't go. They they they're they're not. Uh, they 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 don't like it if you don't like them. So here it is, from TechDirt.com, from the sounding or something else. That works in theory, but is a complete <laughs> is a complete abortion in practice department. <laughs> oh, tech dirt and their their departments. Anyway, Facebook's latest fake fake news purge terminates several accounts known for their criticism of law enforcement. <sighs> Moderating at a Scale is a nightmare. Anything you do will be wrong. This doesn't mean you shouldn't try. This doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to the criticism. Just be aware that every move you make will cause unintended collateral damage. Making everyone happy is impossible, as I've learned from the chat room here. Uh, making everyone angry is inevitable. Not about everyone angry, but a large portion. Mike Mas Masnick's long, thoughtful post, springing from the multiple platforms uh, booting of Alex Jones, pointed out two things that seem to get forgotten when discussing social media moderation. 
and and IRC is a social media. Uh, it's probably the oldest social media. Well, maybe except for bulleted boards. Anyway, uh, platforms can remove users with impunity without raising legal or ethical issues. This shouldn't prevent us from expressing our concerns about how these moderation issues are handled. This is, ra uh, this is raising its head again because Facebook's efforts to eradicate what they consider fake news or untrustworthy news sources has removed several pages belonging to controversial news sources. For whatever reason, most of these sites are strongly associated with police accountability efforts. Radley Balco uh, listed these sites on Twitter. As part of the purge, Facebook removed pages of several police accountability watchdog critic groups, including Cop Block, the Free Thought Project, uh, and Police the Police. They've also apparently severely restricted activity for, for, for the Photography is Not a Crime page. Yes, indeed. If you can't read, see that the tweet, that, okay, I, I just read it to you. Anyway, uh, to, critics of, to critics of cop critics, the tweet seemed like hypocrisy. Several quoted an earlier tweet by Balco about platform moderation. One said, private companies like Facebook and Google have every right to remove content they find objectionable. No one owes Alex Jones a platform. Well, that's true. What's going on there? Did uh, the, the audio flash? It looks like the audio must have flashed. All right, sorry, audio people. <laughs> the video didn't, though. Anyway, um, so the, the cop suckers are out in force, as they always are, whenever anybody says anything bad about uh, about the cops. And, and, of course, those people that hate Alex Jones, just for the fact that he was a, a Trump idiot. Um, we'll, we'll we'll come back come come at him on that side. So you, you really can't win for losing. Anyway, this is where the critics of Balco and others stopped reading. This this was supposed to be hypocrisy of all anti Jones, anti Trump, anti cop, anti whatever on full display. But that wasn't the end of the tweet. Here's the rest. When politicians demand removal of implied threats, as well, there was no threats, I start to worry. Senators shouldn't be deciding what's offensive. That's the real issue. When the government starts guiding moderation efforts of private companies, the First Amendment comes under fire. But it seems politicians on both sides would rather see speech they don't like disappear than uphold the Constitution. Case in point, Senator Mark Warner, who took to Twitter to applaud Facebook's purge. Mark Warner says, Good step by Facebook. Now that Russia's playbook is out in the open. <laughs> uh, and he, he probably actually really believes uh, that these, these are like Russian bots or whatever. More bad actors are going to take advantage. Social media companies are going to have to continue being proactive in identifying and responding to bad actors using their platforms. Well, the platform themselves are the bad actor. See, that's that's the thing here. Uh, you know, it's it's just <laughs> they're the ones that that are are all totally politically motivated. The, the, the vanishing of a handful of cop accountability focused pages isn't exactly what comes to mind when someone's talking about Russian interference. Encouraging platforms to engage in further moderation may seem innocuous, but the reality of the situation is there is constant pressure applied by people like Senator Warner for platforms to do more, 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 because somehow speech they don't care for can still be found on the internet. The more politicians push for action, the more col collateral damage they will cause. They may feel there's no constitutional problem since they're not actually mandating moderation efforts, but they are harming free speech, if only indirectly at this point. Certainly Facebook is free to make, make accounts it finds questionable, Nuke, nuke accounts it finds questionable. 
but each moderation move expands the definition of untrustworthy to encompass entities who represent newsworthy items with biased reporting. Anyone using the platform is free to find more balanced reporting. Senators standing back and applauding bad moderation helps no one. Hooray. Good article. Good post. And, uh, you know... I, I I don't I, you know these these people that they they won't, don't don't want to believe anything unless it's approved by the government uh, they they can kiss my ass they can kiss my big fat hairy ass <laughs> oh man I tell you I, I should go down and, and get some of the older older articles that I never got around to. I like this one here. This is a good one. See, I might, I might have already covered this. I'm just going to give you the, a little, a little touch of it, and then I'll, I'll move on to something else. Because, but, but I think it's important because if you're going to have a mayor, which I don't really think anybody needs a mayor, but if you're going to have a mayor, this is the best guy for the mayor. Golden Retriever elected as town mayor. <laughs> it's from the DailyWire.com. This is from. Uh, September 14th, so about a month ago. It says it may seem far-fetched, but a golden retriever is actually serving as the mayor of a small community in California. Maximus Mighty Dog Mueller II, or, as he's known commonly by locals, Mayor Max, has been serving the town of Idlewild for five years and, uh, and successor to his canine uncle. For real. <laughs> That's really all I need to give you from that. Uh, like I said, I wanted to go back and get some of these stories that I'd bypassed in, in previous shows because I didn't have time to get to them. <laughs> and I got some funny stuff back there, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is this funny? Not really funny, I guess. Just the way it is, if you're if you're an Apple user, and and not to say that Android different Android manufacturers won't also do this, or don't already have this, but here it is from October 8 on the New York Post dot NYPost dot com. Leaked Apple memo reveals secret built-in kill switch. And and I'll, I'll just tell you the the reason for this kill switch that they put in there is they don't want you, as a private individual, as not part of their corporation, repairing... What the hell did I do there? How did I do that? Did I forget that one? No, I got that. Oh, okay. I already put it in there. I don't know how I did that. Uh, a anyway, so if you uh, try to repair it, maybe you want to run your own repair shop to repair uh, various phones, cell phones... They don't want you to do it, and they will kill the, the, your your device, uh, whether it's an iPhone, an iPad, whatever, unless it's done by one of the Apple stores. Uh, I, this seems highly wrong. You went out and you paid whatever large amounts of money for these Apple products, and if it breaks down, you should be able to have it repaired however you want, whether it's you doing it yourself if you have the knowledge and uh, tools and ability, or if you take it to a local shop to have it done that's not Apple, that charges like half the price that Apple would charge to do that. So I think this is total bullshit, but we've seen it coming in various different things. I think certain vehicle manufacturers are doing similar things, too, um, with certain core core components. Which is which is what this is about. But like, say you cracked your uh, screen on your on your Apple device, uh, you can't take it to just anybody and have them put a new screen in. Even though I would not consider that a core component, uh, because you're not really getting into the electronics. You're just cracking it open, pulling out the old screen, and, and connecting the new one. Uh, but but Apple does, and and they won't let you do that. So. Uh, just beware of that if you are considering an Apple, if you don't already have one. And uh, beware. Buyer beware, as they say. As they say. <laughs> oh. Yeah. This 
article is for, uh, well, everybody, I guess. It's on theguardian.com. Israel fines New Zealand women $18,000 for urging Lord Concert boycott. They didn't do anything other than say, Hey, Lord, we don't think you should go and play in Israel because Israel's terrible. They're, they do bad things. They're wiping out the Palestinians and... And, and and they're just they're just bad, and we don't think you should support Israel by doing a concert there. And uh, apparently, the judge rules that artistic welfare of three Israeli teenagers was harmed by actions of these other three Israeli teenagers. That's right. An Israeli court has ordered oh two two Israeli teenagers, New Zealand women, to pay damages for harming the artistic welfare of three Israeli teenagers after the pop star Lord canceled her performance in Tel Aviv. Uh, judge, some name I can't pronounce, ruled that Justine Sachs and Nadia Abu Shinab of New Zealand must pay damages to the Israeli teenagers, uh, whose names I don't want to even bother pronouncing, totaling more than 18,000 not New Zealand dollars for writing a letter. They wrote a letter. That's what they did. Urging the singer to cancel her concert. They wrote a letter. And that somehow damaged these other kids because Lord actually listened. I don't really know anything about Lord. I never listened to any of her music. There's a picture of her here, kind of, but you can't really tell what she looks like from it. So I, I don't know who she is. But apparently she was going to do a concert there. It remained unclear whether the claimants would be able to collect the cash. Legal experts said the judgment was not automatically enforceable under New Zealand law, and the chance the woman being compelled to pay damages was unlikely, as they're not in Israel, when they wrote the open letter and did not participate in the court process in any way. Uh, the spokesman, uh, spokesperson for the New Zealand Ministry of Foreign Affairs said it would be up to the courts of New Zealand to decide whether the claims for damages was enforceable. Now, we all know that Israel has a heavy fist and wields it uh, widely. So, will they have to pay? I don't know. Um, hopefully not. But again, they did nothing other than write a letter. And, and somehow this Israeli judge, and I, and I think it's actually a law on, on Israeli books uh, now that if you uh, do anything to promote boycotts of anything in Israel, then they consider you to be a criminal, or at least liable civilly, under their system. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's insane. <laughs> right. All right, more music, <laughs> I think. Oh, man, I tell you. I don't even know what to say. Something like that. There it is. There it is. Right there for you. Steppenwolf. <laughs> You gotta ride at your own risk. Here, bro, get on it. Yeah, get on it. That there is a band called uh, Larkin Poe. Uh, I, I say a band, but it's a couple of sisters there uh, called Larkin Poe. Uh, they, they've been around for, I don't know, a little while. And when, when they first came out, I wasn't really digging on them. But uh, I think they're getting better. I, I'd, I'd say they're getting uh, a little better nowadays. So that song was called Beach Blonde Bottle Blues, filmed in the extra wide screen there. Anyway, before that was uh, Greta Van Fleet with Highway Tune Live at the Austin City Limits Festival. Oh, when did that video come out? Just October 8th, so uh, not that long ago. Uh, anyway, um, we kicked it off there with Monster from Steppenwolf. Yeah, the old version, the original version. Not that newfangled, dangled version that came out in 2008. Vin A. has joined us here. Hey, Vinny. How the hell you doing, brother? <laughs> oh, man. I tell you. 
tell you. <laughs> it's a strange world that we live in. Very strange. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Trying to get some stuff lined up here. Um, now, I, I think I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm pretty sure I mentioned at the top of the show, that next week will be our Halloween show, the Freakers Ball Halloween show. And, and I want to uh, suggest to you, if I had not yet, suggest to you to get in some Halloween requests coming on up to next week. I know I, I suggested that at the top of the show, but it's good to mention it again. Um, well, we have several already Halloween requests in there, but, uh, you know, the more the merrier. And, and I know there's a lot of Halloween songs out there that I don't know. And uh, the rock and rollier, bluesier, the better. Well, for, from my liking, you know. Um. <laughs> so feel free to, to get them uh, Halloween requests in throughout the week. And uh, we'll appreciate that. That'll be good. That'll be a good thing. Um. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Vinny. Uncle Vinny? No, wait. He can't be an uncle. He calls me Big Papa. <laughs> Cousin Vinny. <laughs> wait, he can't be a... He can't be a... cut. Well, in Arkansas, I guess I could be a Papa <laughs> and an uncle. <laughs> I'm not really sure how that all works down there in the state of Arkansas. Uh, but I think you could be a, both a father and an uncle. <laughs> Moose girl, <laughs> Ubered it. She Ubered it. Good deal. Did the Brewers win, Moose girl? That's what I want to know. Did you? Did your? Did your Brewers win? All right. Uh here's here's uh, something for you that you may be interested in. I didn't. There's no music here that I saw, but apparently this is going to happen. Stray Cats to mark 40th anniversary with a new album and a tour. Brian Setzer, Lee Rocker, and Slim Jim Phantom reunite to release their first album since 1993. Yeah, Stray Cats music. I love it. All right, the Stray Cats are coming home. After reuniting earlier this year for a handful of reunion shows, the Rockabilly Revivalists will celebrate their 40th anniversary in 2019, marking the milestone with both a new album and a full-size tour. Uh, bandmates Brian Setzer, Lee Rocker, and Slim Jim Phantom haven't released a studio album record since the early 90s with 1993's original Cool, uh, marking their last effort together. 25 years have elapsed since then, punctuated by a handful of solo projects, including Setzer's Brian Setz Orchestra, whose Grammy-winning cover of Louis Prima's Jump, Jab, and Whale will, uh, became a surprise hit in 1998. The occasional Stray Cats tour, uh, coincidentally, the band will resume its classic pace next year by teaming up with Peter Collins, the same producer who oversaw Setzer's Jump, Jab, and Whale. Uh, for their first record of the 21st century. The new project is slated to be recorded in Nashville, Tennessee, and additional help from engineer Vance Powell, whose credits include Chris Stapleton's Traveler. Yep. Anyway, there's a little more there to the story. If, you, if you're interested in that, I, I love the Stray Cats. You know, I, I dig that. that uh, well, Rockabilly, just in general, I, I love Rockabilly. So uh, I, I'm, all, I'm all for it, you know. To me, it's, it's, it, I, I'm uh, anxiously anticipating their new album uh, when it comes out. Go Stray Cats, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. Let's see what else we got here for you. Oh... <laughs> I'm kind of going in in just random order here tonight uh, with these stories. I, I I wanted to go back and do some of the older ones, but hey, you get what you get. Anyway, this here from the Metro.co.uk. Little little educational information for you. Little educational information. Moons that orbit other moons are called moon moons. 
<laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Which is perhaps why science is debating about calling moons that orbit other moons another moon moon. I, I mean, why not? The, the term was coined by astrophysicist Duncan Forgan, not very creative guy apparently, who is awaiting publication on a, 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 a public paper on the topic. The concept all, was also picked up by astronomers Juna Colomer and Sean Raymond, who have written their own paper on the subject. They have described how moon moons could possibly, could be possible, but we're deducting points because they refer to them as sub-moons. Basically, according to computer models, a moon moon exists in a delicate balance, orbiting around large moons that are relatively distant from their parent planets. They need to orbit close enough to remain within the gravitational pull of the moon rather than the larger planet, but they have to be far enough away to avoid being torn apart, uh, apart or pulled out of the, the orbit by its moon. <laughs> and, and, and here's my favorite. There's a bunch of different tweets and such about it here. To think. Here's my favorite one. How much moon could a moon 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 if a moon moon could moon moon? <laughs> Got that? <laughs> how much how much moon could a moon 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 if a moon moon could moon moon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> people. <laughs> moon moons. It's just it's it's just a catchy it's a catchy thing uh, even though it's not really creative, you know. Uh, you, you gotta you gotta like the moon moons the moon 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 moons. <laughs> Apparently, there haven't been any examples of moon moons found in our solar system so far, but contenders for places to look could be Saturn's moon Titans or Jupiter's moon Callas Callisto. Uh, when you realize that Jupiter alone has 16 moons that we know of, and the biggest one, Ganymede, uh, is only slightly smaller than Mars, it suddenly becomes entirely possible that there are some moon moons lurking about. Wouldn't, that would not be surprising at all. But then it gets even more ridiculous. I think we could say for sure that there's not a moon moon that's kilometers across around Jupiter's Saturn or Saturn's Queen uh, University Belfast astronomer Michael Banfast, ba Bannister told New Scientist a moon moon down to the size of a skyscraper could exist out there but I'd call it a moon moonlet moon moonlet <laughs> now here's my, my question on it let's say one of those moon moons has a moon, uh, a moon orbiting it. So then, do you have a moon, moon, moon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh, it, well, Moose Girl, it is at this very point in time, balls to the wall. But we, it can certainly become Freaker's ball in an instant if you. Uh, would like to join in on the festivities. All right, Art, sleep well. Still, uh, talk to you tomorrow. Yep, Art Underground going to bed, and he's got his show Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> Immediately following Hal Anthony. So uh, there's that. The moon, 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 moons. Yeah. <laughs> I'm easily amused. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, how many of you out there all use the thing within your browser called the Do Not Track? Send out the, the Do Not Track signal to websites that request it. Of course, not all websites request it, but some do. Uh, and, and there's a thing there in most of your modern browsers that says Do Not Track. Apparently, it don't do shit. <laughs> Apparently, it does nothing. The do not track privacy, 
privacy tool used by millions of people doesn't do a goddamn thing. Um, <laughs> so, when you go into the privacy settings on your browser, there's a little option there to turn on the Do Not Track function, which will send an invisible request on your behalf to all the websites you visit telling them to not track you. A reasonable person might think that enabling it will stop a porn site from tracking from keeping track of what she watches. And I, and I love how they did that. They made it so women are watching the porn. <laughs> or keep Facebook from collecting the addresses of all the places she visits on the Internet. Or prevent third-party attackers she's never heard of from following her from site to site. According to a recent survey by Forrester Research, a quarter, a quarter of American adults use Do Not Track to protect their privacy. Our own stats on Giz, at Gizmodo Media Group show that 9% of visitors have turned it on. We got bad news for those millions of privacy-minded people. Do Not Track is like spraying on sunscreen, a product that makes you feel safe while doing little to actually do any protection for you. Yeah, <laughs> it does nothing. <laughs> Do Not Track, uh, as it was first imagined a decade ago by consumer advocates, was going to be, be a Do Not Call list for the Internet, helping to free people from the annoying targeted ads. And What, what, what is this? Why, why am I not just signing in automatically? All right, let's start Skype and give me a question there. I don't know my freaking password. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right, I may not be able to get into Skype. Hang on. Um, uh, anyway, so there it is for you. Did, did I put that link into the, the, the chat there? No, I did not. So uh, hang, hang on. Hang, hang on just a second, and I'll figure out why my Skype is giving me a little headache here. Oh, I hate that. Moose, did you install the, uh, the uh, other one yet? <laughs> what the hell is it called? Wire? Oh man. Why, why, why? Skype. I, I don't know what my password is. Um but 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 let's just try this here. See if that lets me in. <laughs> I don't remember the password. Reset it now. Okay, I'll reset it now. Uh, that's me, and enter the characters you see. K V P P H S X six. See, normally I would start this thing before the show, and if I, if I came across a problem, um, yeah, you can text me. I mean, why not? That's easier than trying to open my email. Last four digits of the phone number eight. All right. Enter the code. Okay, now I gotta wait for a text. <laughs> oh man, there it is. Okay. Enter the code. Three four six eight one two three. All right, there we go. New password. All right. Yeah. All right, please choose a password you haven't used before. <laughs> Fuckers. I need a password. <laughs> Let me see if I got one over here somewhere that uh, I'd like to use. Um, yeah, what the hell, we use this here. Why not? That'll work. <laughs> Fucking Skype, man. I hate it. <laughs> Did it work? I click next, I click next. 
my account has been recovered. Hooray! <laughs> uh, what now? What do you want? Continue email. What? What the hell are you talking about? Oh. Jeez. Pain in my ass. All right. Hey, I'm in. What the hell is all this crap? It's out of the way. Okay, I got in. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. <laughs> Did you put wire on me yet, Moose? <laughs> Skype is going to be in the news tomorrow. Oh, well, it it, it, it was kind of in the news just now. I don't know if you uh, heard me, but... Uh, Skype sucks big balls. Yep. Yes, it do. All right, Moose. Well, I'm going to play some more music. And then and then you can get into Skype and call after this set. Because I think I'm good to go here for a new, for a new set. <laughs> How'll that be? Oh. <laughs> uh... No, it's not ZZ Top. It's kind of like him, but not really. John Popper and the boys. Ah, uh, so nice, so nice. Right there was Dorothy with Who Do You Love? Yes, indeed. Great stuff. Uh, before that was the Black Rebel Motorcycle Club asking the question whatever happened to my rock and roll and we kicked it off with the blues traveler uh, doing covering ZZ Top's LaGrange with Sadie Johnson just kicking a little butt there on that video let me tell you she knows how to play some guitar <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah so uh, good good uh, good stuff there good stuff in my personal point of view. Yep. Of course, as always, I always like the music I play, which is why I play it. <laughs> oh, check that out. We have a phone call. Hello? Hola. It's the Mighty Moose Girl. It is I. It is her. It is she. It is me. Yeah. And I'm stoked as hell. Stoked as hell because? Yes, because the Brewers are going to Game 7. Sweet. Hell yeah. Well, that's terrific. So they won? Yes, I... that was so fun. So, so, so it's going to Game 7. Whoever wins the game tomorrow night goes to the fucking World Series, baby. Right on. Yeah, man. And I'm so stoked. It's so... It's, so fun. I love postseason baseball, especially for a team that I love that's in it. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, dude. I mean, it is for me. Probably not for other people, but you know, I like it. Well, and that's okay. It's okay for me to like whatever the fuck I want to like. Damn right it is. It is, because I am who the fuck I am. Uh, as... And so are you all. <laughs> you are all who the fuck you are. You are who the fuck you are. Yep. <laughs> and you can't fucking run from it. You can't hide from it. No, the you... best thing you can do is just accept it. Well, this is who the fuck I am, and I'm good with it. Yeah. You know? Good. Because otherwise, you're going to be all uh, fucking miserable. Right. You know, and, trying and to that's... compare yourself to other people, trying to fucking do this and do that, and be, like, better than the other guy. It's like, you know what? Forget all that shit. Forget it. Yeah, just forget it. Just be who the fuck you are and be your awesome self. Because you're awesome. You know, you are. Exactly. And the best thing you can do is just accept who the fuck you are and move on with it. You know, trying to be someone else or trying to prove something this, something that. It's a waste of fucking time. Yeah. 
That's all I'm saying. You know, like, be yourself. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Right. No fear here. Good. Right, Crip? That's right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I agree with it. You know, I, it's my theory, but, I mean, it's not just my theory. It's, like, other people's theory, too. But, it's only, but it's, you it's, get to a certain age in your life, you realize that all this bullshit that you thought mattered doesn't fucking matter anymore. Right. You know? Right. And it's a great feeling. When you, like, finally realize that, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all this petty shit that I was wasting my time on worrying about doesn't mean shit anymore. And they're like, yeah, you're correct. And you're like, oh, my God. Cool. Cool. You know, so then you can, like, be, like, getting out of your shit, you know? Exactly. And no one should be able to tell you what the fuck to do or what not to do. No, they should not. You know, if you want to smoke fucking weed, smoke fucking weed. Right. You know, it's a fucking plant. Smoke it. I mean, it's a fucking plant, and no person in this world has the right to say that it's not a plant and that it should be ill quoted based illegal. You know, who the fuck ever this person thought that it would be okay to make a plant illegal is a fucking whack job or was because they're probably dead by now. They probably are. Anslinger. Anslinger is one name. No, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's ass licker. Well, it should be ass licker because he was licking fucking Dixon's ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't want the counterculture. The government hates counterculture. They no do. No matter what counterculture it is, and it could just not be music or hit the hippie movement. It could be like people that are pro-abortion. Okay. Right. Then that's counterculture. Exactly. You know? It's like, dudes, people are who the fuck they are. You can't change people. Right. You know. Well, now here, take this into uh, uh, okay. whatever, into a higher perspective. <laughs> uh, higher? Oh, I'll do that. Give me that doobie. Well, it's a, it's on higherperspectives.com. Okay. <laughs> All right. I like that name, by the way. It says, this new cannabis capsule is so potent, it could replace every single painkiller. I believe that wholeheartedly. Bring it on, motherfucker. Yeah. It says, as, as more and more people are starting to realize... The pharmaceutical industry is basically one big legal drug ring. Just as people get addicted to heroin and methamphetamine, pharmaceutical companies push drugs with slightly altered chemical compositions deemed legal by the government. Government! This, the, the one good thing to come out of this is increased demands for natural and alternative treatments that lie outside of the domain of Big Pharma. One sub outside of the domain meaning a natural. That's not. It's, given plant. They, they, it means they can't control it. Uh, right. w one substance in particular has been seen to hold a great medical be uh, medicinal be potential, and that's cannabis. Uh, one of the most convenient methods of CBD use is capsule form. Simply swallow your dosage and let the capsule do the rest. No mixing, right. no mixing, no measuring, no worry. Medicine that's meant to be here, it's meant to heal you, do its job. Caps, capsules are great for on-the-go types and those who don't want to be bothered with the flavor or texture of oil. Not only that, but just one dose a day can have a dramatic effect on your overall health, vitality, and well-being by literally feeding the main balancing system of your body. So, there. Take that. And Cowboy Tech tried a cap yesterday. 
Sweet. <laughs> Oops, I have the hiccups right now. What now? I'm so sorry. What? The hiccups. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to talk while I have the hiccups. All right. Anyway, there's more to the article. It shows you the chemical compound, the CBD. Uh, it's in the CBD capsules, the combination, what it does, uh, creates the perfect... Okay, so you tried it. How was it, CT? Like, tell us. Could have slept easily, he says. Was it like smoking a joint? Um, but Could have slept easily, but did you? But did you? I don't know. <laughs> he's not answering yet. Maybe he's typing. Oh, uh, he's not. He's not answering. He could be typing. He probably is. <laughs> anyway, that. I mean, if well, you ask a question on a show, you have to like wait for the response. You know. Well, we were also smoking. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Anyway, in that article, that link that I just posted there, you can all, you can order your CBD capsules right right through that. Uh, that, web, that well, that's what it says. Even if I live in an illegal state, Do, no no CBD is allowed where you are. Uh, I think it is now, oh, but okay. I think they only like legalize hemp. I don't think they legalize like medical marijuana yet. Oh. Or cannabinoids. Cannabinoids. Uh, no. Okay, so I'm confused because I thought the term for marijuana was cannabis, right? Yeah. So the plural of that is cannabinoids. No. Not cannabinoids. The plural of cannabis is cannabis. <laughs> As far as I so know. What do you call cannabis? See, Grammy says cannabinoids. I say cannabinoids. Cannabinoids. She says cannabinoids. Oh, well. She's, so I'm just saying, I need to correct that woman. She's Grammy. She can talk however she wants. I know how she she can, but I'm just, I want to make sure she like <laughs> knows how to pronounce the word. Oh, well, you know. She always says cannabinoids. It's not cannab. It's it, it, it. She says cannabinoids. It's cannabinoids. I say cannab. I I I say it's cannabinoids. That's wrong. Prove it. C A N. Can. The bus equals cannabinoids, not cannabinoids. Cannabinoid. No, it's even hard to say. Cannabinoid. 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 There you go. <laughs> you got it right, Grim. Uh, and I love Grammy, so it's like, I'm not going to, like, tell her during your show that you're saying that wrong. She's, like, replacing the, the M with the B. Here, let, let's, see if they, let's see if they have a thing. Okay, here. Listen. Listen. Cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. <laughs> Cannabinoid. <laughs> Cannabinoid. Cannab. Cannab. Cannabinoid. I think that's how you were saying it. Cannabinoid. Yes. Cannabinoid. Grammy says it different. Cannabinoid. She's keb cannabinoid. <laughs> anyway, so if you go to okay, the... I'll talk to her about it. No big deal. If, 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 you, if you go to the uh, if you go to the uh, Merriam-Webster site, there they, uh, <laughs> they they'll pronounce words for you. <laughs> yeah, how they think they should be pronounced. Uh, whatever. There you go. Cannabinoid. 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 Cannab, not cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. C A N. That's cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. Cannabis <laughs> e go. equals cannabinoid, not cannabinoid. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Grim. Why, thanks, Merriam-Webster. And you know what? Like, I don't even give a shit. You know, it doesn't matter because she's talking about the same thing, but... um, 
I live in a blame state for medical marijuana, or not even medical marijuana, for fucking marijuana legalization. Right. I, I don't even want it legal, legalized. I want it to be fucking free. I don't. I want no law of touch, touching it at all. But that's wishful thinking. Well, um, tell me this. Yeah, now you know Canada, cannabinoid Canada. Um, yeah. <laughs> just legalized you said, weed. You said cannabinoid. 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 That's the word. Yeah. Uh, cannabinoid. No, cannabinoid. Listen, can you you can't you, hear, you can't hear this? Cannabinoid. Cannabinoid, not cannabinoid. 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 That's wrong. No, it's right. It's that's that, that's Merriam-Webster's no, pronunciation. Canab- cannabinoid. <laughs> there, you said it right that time. All right. Anyway, so you said it uh, wrong yeah. the other time. Uh, well, just like Grammy said it, you say it. So, so yeah, well, that's how that's how they say it. Anyway, yeah, you know in no, Canada, not, but that's not correct. Though. You know, you know, in Canada this week, they 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 made the they finally made the pot legal across the whole country. Right, but you can't only smoke certain kinds of pot. Oh, yeah, it's got to be whatever. Government approved all that bullshit. Yeah, you know whatever. what? That's well, fucking bullshit. Uh, that's my word. That's legalization. I realize it is, but that's all right. Okay, so my, I, that's not got anything to do with what I'm talking about here. <laughs> so, okay. in Canada, British Columbia is pretty famous for, for weed, right? Yep. But which... which province of Canada do you think smokes the most weed per person? Ontario. Ontario. Nope. Guess again. Nova Scotia. <laughs> hey, you got it. <laughs> All right. Nova Scotia. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that, that's apparently that's the deal there. Uh, is, is Nova Scotia has got the most potheads per capita. <laughs> well, uh, Beth is in New Brunswick. Um. <laughs> well, it's like Iceland up there. There's nothing else to do. Beth is an NB, you not a... You fucking swamp weed up there in order to fucking live up there. It's the only way you can really survive in winter. Or survive those See, people. Okay, I'm letting out this huge secret right now, but I'm telling, telling you guys right now that weed helps you survive winter. Yeah, oh, it's very close. I mean, they're right next to each other, cowboy. Yeah, they're right next to each other. <laughs> but apparently, um, Nova Scotia, which is just a little further out to the ocean there, um, <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they they smoke more. <laughs> That's what they tell you. But, oh, you know. God. Uh, anyway, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a story to lead into the next set here. All right. Let me, let me see if, it, here it is, here it is. Okay. It's posted on the New York Post, nypost.com. Shoplifter goes on epic beer run. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, a man from Texas was caught on surveillance video going on an epic beer run after swiping five cases of Bud Light from a convenience store, cop said. The the Sudsy suspect wa- walked into Murphy's Express in Arlington, Texas, and picked okay, up a, Bud Light, dude! Picked up the pile of beer before bolting to really? the door. Bud Light? <laughs> you still fucking beer! You better be better than sway fucking Bud Light shit! Here's the text from the, the textbook definition of a beer run, Arlington Cops tweeted. This beer baron swiped five cases from a convenience store. The man threw the Bud Light into a gray Dodge truck and took off. So you know what song I'm going to play. <laughs> Don't you? <ya? laughs> oh, God. Yes, indeed. The man... Made the epic beer run. He's a dumbass because he was running on swag fucking shit beer. Yeah, well, he got it and he he took off. Here we go. Ah, 
yeah, there. That's, uh, you're right, Heap was stealing, or stealing, when you should have been buying. Uh, that was a, uh, Hansel request, actually. Uh, before that, we had Hailstorm. And, you know, I could have probably saved that video for next week for the Halloween show, but, uh, hey, what the hell. It, it's good anytime. Uh, Hailstorm with Do Not Disturb, which um, is a very recent video. It only came out like uh, 10 days ago, 8 days ago, something like that. Uh, anyway, so. Hailstorm is a good band, dude. And yeah. I'm not a metalhead, and I'm not a, like a hard rap chick, but I love Hailstorm. Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah, yeah. She, she's great. How Lizzie, can you not love them? You L know? L L L Lizzie Hale's awesome. Anyway. I, uh, I can tell good music, you know. And we we kicked it off there with Beer Run. B double E double R U N. Beer Run. Yeah. I'm getting some uh, flash in here. Not sure if I got the bandwidth. Flash. flash. Someone's flashing you, Grim? No, that, no, my, uh, my, my broadcaster is. Uh, oh, shit. Damn it. I hope there was some hot chick in some trench coat last year. Yeah. Well, that would have been nice, but it looks like I'm not getting any. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what I was hoping for. Okay. It says it reconnected, no. and... Uh-oh. Right. Everything, everything's back up. What? So, yeah, it looks like it might have disconnected there for a minute. Oh, shit. The video stream, so... Uh, uh, you Damn tell, it. You, you tell me if your video stream is still going. Uh... <laughs> As far as I know, it's still going because I hear it fine. Well, oh, okay. but actually, I'm refreshing, so I don't know. You are re don't... you are refreshing. You're you're quite refreshing. I'm refreshing. Yes, <laughs> I am refreshing. I try to be like a fart in church. You know, that's what I try to do. I I don't know how refreshing that would be. I think uh, some of Grammy's like comedy is rubbing off on me. <laughs> Because that would be something she would say, I would think. Like a fart in church. Like, think about farting in church. How embarrassing would that fucking be? Uh, you, if you could blame the person next to you. To me, yeah. it would be fucking embarrassing. If it's a silent but deadly, that's one thing. You can blame it on somebody else. If it's coming right out of your ass, you cannot fucking deny it. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you could. You know, like, hopefully that never happens to you. I hope, like, one of my things I say to everybody... I hope you never have to fart in church. Yeah. Because that would suck, dude. I mean, imagine that situation. <laughs> okay. and if it's one of those ones that you can't help but coming out, you know, the ones you can't hold. So I don't give a fuck who you are. You hold your fucking farts, dude. Wow. Because everybody does. It's not good for you. It isn't, but everybody does it. You gotta let them bastards fly. Because you don't want to fucking fart when you're in certain situations. <laughs> you know, so you got to hold it in. Yeah. You, like, run outside or run to an area where no one's going to, like, hear you. You want to let it rip. Let it rip. Let it rip, baby. <laughs> you know? No, but you're better off, what? you know what? Farting shouldn't be, like, a negative thing. It should be, like, a good positive thing. Like, when people sneeze and everyone says, bless you, uh -huh. it should be the same way for farts. If you fart, everyone should say, good for you. Yeah. Get that shit out. Get that gas out. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think farting should be as normal as sneezing. What, you, Grim? Absolutely. Because, you know what? Face it. We all fucking fart. Even dogs fucking fart. Uh, yes, I mean, they certainly on. do. It's a normal thing. It's a natural thing to do it. And it's good for you. Uh, it's well, not like it's harmful. Like, why are we preventing some, doing something? And why is it so, like, you know what it is? It's the smell. It's the smell. And the sound. That's what turns people off. But think about a burp. Sometimes I, like, burped, and I felt like I farted. Okay. But it wasn't out of my ass. <laughs> Why is farting so bad? It's not. It's a good, healthy, biological thing that humans have to do. Well, it, 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 it's it's a funny sound, and it's stinky. Right? But burps are a funny sound and stinky. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> but I guess burps come out of your mouth and not your ass. Well, that's a big difference, right? You know. 
course, girls girls have that other thing they do. Oh yeah, get a stomach ache because they hold their fart thing because they don't want to embarrass like fart in front of their date. No, 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 no. I was talking about their their pussy farts. Oh God, those are the like oh oh don't even go there, dude. <laughs> don't even go there. Like I hear you there. Yeah. Those are uncontrollable as well. By the way, you know they just happen. It just happens. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying right there, right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not even go to that subject right now. Oh. <laughs> oh, Total boy. silence. Okay, so I type in chat. It would be nice 18. if non-psycho people around the world. Wouldn't that be nice? 18, okay. If non-psycho people ran the fucking world. 18 is... Uh, That's like my goal 40, in life. 40, to have non-psycho... And you know what? In my opinion, we don't need no one to rule the world. No, we certainly you know, don't. Come on! Make do! You know, live where you want to live and survive accordingly. I mean, come on! Yeah. You know, so the fucking government back in the day, like, Buffalo roamed the prairies, like in Nebraska, and Iowa, Montana, Nevada, probably, you know, I don't know exactly. Right. But what I'm saying is, they hunted the fuck out of the goddamn fucking buffalo. And it wasn't even to get the meat. Their main purpose was to starve the Native Americans out, dude. Right. I mean, I'm just, I'm going to look up a picture right now. Yeah, it's, it's sick, sick stuff, you know, sick stuff. It is, and you see, like, this picture, and you will see this, Graham, I'm gonna, I don't want you to show this picture. All right, well, you got four you minutes, see. you got four, four minutes. Well, to... I, I'm going to look at it right now. <laughs> I'm looking at you right now. All right, link it up. Where are you? There you are. Okay. So what they did is they went there and they just wanted to wipe out the Native Americans, right? Right. So they go down there and they just fucking massacre these buffaloes and leave them to rot. They didn't even take the meat. You know? Yeah. And a Native American used every part of that animal. They used the sinew. They ate the meat. They fucking made clothing out of the hide. Right. You know? And it's a disgusting fucking... It's disgusting, dude. And I, I'm an animal lover. And I'm also a lover of, like, the earth. Because I know it's my mother. And I know I have to have the earth in order to survive. To survive. The earth has to be healthy, the right. air has to be good to breathe, the water has to be good to drink, the food has to be good to eat. If I don't have those things, I will not survive. I will perish. All right, well, there's a mountain of buffalo skulls. Yep. Hunted, for their, hunted for their skins and the rest of the animal left behind to decay on the ground. Yep. Hunted for their skins only. You got these morons. Disgusting. Got these morons standing around on it. It's standing out like it's some great thing that they did. Yep. You know? It's disgusting. Very much. Very hideous. Yeah. Well. You know, this is why I've been doing the Freakers Bottle. And even though, like, I'm drinking beers and I'm like, you know... It's still, I'm still know what the fuck I'm talking about, you know? Sure, sure. And Fisker's Ball is like, not like CNN. If you expect CNN type of a show, then fucking go watch a CNN fucking show. Yeah, we're more like Beavis and Butthead here. Yeah, we're more like, you know what, <laughs> fuck you. That's what we're more like. Alright, right, we gotta do our last set here. Yeah, let's do it. So. Thank you for 
tuned in, everybody. You guys are fucking awesome. Absolutely. Just make sure you know that. Tell yourself. Yeah. I'm fucking awesome. Damn right. You are. You are. No, you are. That's the that's the lost fingers there with Black Betty. That's a different version than we've heard before on here. Uh, Hans found that version uh, of Black Betty and said, "Hey, I like this version better than the one you're doing playing from that studio that they're in." So uh, thank you for that, Hansel. And before that, we heard for Miss Moose Girl, "Long as I Can See the Light." John Fogerty there with a like a full-on orchestra doing an old Creedence song. Uh, before that, we heard the Stray Cats in Rock This Town. Yeah, love them Stray Cats. And we kicked it off with four Cowboy Tech, Hank Williams Jr., Country Boys Can Survive. Yeah, they can. Yeah, apparently. No, <laughs> uh, they can. And girls. Country Not girls. Just boys, but girls, too. Well, the song don't mention the girls, but... Right, but I'm just saying. Uh, I know, I know, I know. I'm young. a woman, so I have to like say it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, um, that's gonna wrap it up. But tomorrow you got the dark table at noon with Flash and yep. possibly Grammy sitting in. Wow. Yeah, which that would be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. And then on uh, Sunday I'll be on at noon Eastern with the blues and the trivia here in the chat, having a good old time. And uh, immediately following me at 3 p.m. Eastern is Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And immediately following him at 5 p.m. Eastern is Art Underground Straight Talk 101. And then on Tuesday, as Tuesday rolls around, at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern is In a Perfect World with Flash and, I think, Rob Works sitting in there to, oh, uh, to help about. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then at, okay, uh, I got to tune in for that one. That's a must-hear show right Yeah, there. then at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern is Art Underground again with the Rockin' Renegade. He plays Sweet. a couple, couple, yeah, hours, right. couple hours of music. Love he plays. Art and family. Yeah. He, welcome. He pe- and we love you here. Yeah, he plays a couple hours of music on Tuesday and Thursday yeah, night. love you. <laughs> and then, of course, you got Grammy on Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Of course, yeah, of course. 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we'll be back again next Friday. Sure. Oh, it's our, it's, our, it's our Halloween show next week, so. Oh, my God, people. Bear in you mind uh, that we we could use your request, so. Yes, we could. Yeah. Halloween requests, y'all. Hey, y'all have yourselves a great We're weekend. Out. Thanks for tuning in. We love y'all. We do. Peace.